Is this possibly the best keyboard layout for software developers? In my opinion, it comes very close, and this layout combines speedy typing, easy available special characters, and navigation right at your fingertips. And no, this is not your typical video about how QWERTY is super bad and insert any alternate keyboard layout here is great. Even though this does play a role, we will go far beyond these rather obvious changes and create a custom layout for all our characters. How do you come to the conclusion that an alternate layout is favorable over your default keyboard? And why would you go through the hassle of relearning how to type? Let me give you some motivation before I'll go into detail about the layout itself. This is a 75% QWERTY board, and some people consider this type of board to be the end-all be-all of keyboards. It has mechanical switches, a nice clacky sound, and it is quite compact due to the removed number pad and function key row. I also consider this to be a huge upgrade over your typical membrane office keyboards. But this is not where the journey towards ergonomics and efficiency ends. This is merely where it started for me. There must be a better solution to this than the one that was forced upon us since mechanical typewriters. As a software engineer, I use my keyboard excessively every day. And while every other profession values and optimizes their tools, most developers never spend a thought on changing to a more user-friendly keyboard. Typing is the primary medium via which software engineers express themselves. We write code, documentation, emails, instant messages. The faster you can type, the more time you have for the really important parts of the job, solving actual problems. Increased typing efficiency also allows you to put your thoughts into action at a similar speed to thinking them up, giving you a more direct workflow. You know the feeling when you pair program with someone and it takes them ages to write down the code you just thought up together? That's horrible, exactly. On top of speed, it is also paramount to type with as few errors as you can, without looking at the keyboard. This will allow you to keep your eyes on the screen and see what's going on, rather than having to frantically zip your eyes between monitor and keyboard. And last but not least, ergonomics are more important than most people think. Talk to someone with RSI and they will tell you that you need to buy an ergonomic keyboard. This is what most developers use on a day-to-day -day basis, the infamous QWERTY layout. Look at the placement of the most important letters compared to where your fingers rest, abysmal. And one step further, seeing where some of the special characters are placed gives me tendonitis when I think about coding for hours on end. And to add insult to injury, the arrow keys together with the rest of the navigation cluster are completely out of the way. You need to reposition your whole right hand to use them. So, but now enough complaining about QWERTY. Let's take a step forward. What are the criteria by which to judge a good keyboard layout? Let me make some suggestions. Stretches. The fewer, the better, ideally zero. I consider moving a finger more than one key from the home row to be a stretch, where two keys are a moderate stretch and three keys or more are basically a no-go, especially horizontally. Stretching vertically tends to be easier and less uncomfortable. That's why I think that the number row is still okay. Awkward finger movement. This is a blanket category that covers everything from safe finger bigrams, which are especially horrible when it's on the pinky, to pinballing around on the keyboard. Having lots of those happen makes typing feel very uncomfortable. The more frequent functionalities should be close to or on the home row. Every key or key combination should be easily found without looking at the board. This is a challenge on most default layouts. And rounding things up, your board should cater to your preferences. I, for example, enjoy using my strong fingers, thumb, index and middle finger, more often than ring finger and pinky. So that's what I chose to optimize my layout around. Before we go into the layout itself, let me take a short detour on hardware. I've been using a split keyboard for more than five years now, and I could never go back to a normal board. 
A split board allows me to type with open shoulders and straight wrists. On top of that, split boards allow you to make much better use of your thumbs, which is a rare find on normal boards. So it's a no-brainer for me that split boards are superior in both an efficiency and ergonomics perspective. What you currently see is the layout I use on my iris. I started working on my first custom layout five years ago, and over countless revisions, this is what it condensed down to. The base layer is nothing special. It is formed by the Colmac Mod DH layout. Colmac in general favors rolling movements from the outside in, for example, the words first, const, etc. I happen to like the style a lot, so after QWERTY and Holmac, Colmac felt like a home to me. Surrounding the letters are the most important functional and modifier keys, most of which are in very typical positions. Note though that the control key is above shift, which makes it much easier to reach. The thumb keys are two modifier keys, two keys to switch layers, delete and backspace on the left, as well as space and enter on the right. Reaching the upper thumb keys may seem a bit awkward at first, but turns out to be no problem. My default resting position for the thumbs are the lower and raise keys, to allow switching to different layers instantly. While holding down the lower key, the inner keys change their functionality. The left side features a navigation cluster, while the right side is home to all kinds of characters frequently used in coding. The layout is transparent for the modifier keys, allowing them to function like on the base layer. The idea behind the navigation cluster is to allow moving through the code without leaving the home row. And yes, I will talk about Vim at the end of the video, so hold your horses for now. The arrow keys are adopted from your typical WASD gaming setup, but shifted by one key to the right to allow the fingers to stay in the home row position. Next to the up arrow key are key combinations that jump by one whole word, which is a feature I use all the time. For larger movements, I tend to use home end and page up, page down. I chose to put the navigation cluster on the left side, as this allows me to use the complete navigation functionality with one hand. Remember, the lower key is held down by the left thumb. The right side of the lower layout provides easy access to all the different parentheses, except for angled brackets, as these are already well placed on the Colmac layer. Additionally, you'll find arithmetic operators here. I consider the special characters on the number row, like the hash, the dollar symbol or the asterisk, to be no problem. Thus, I did not put duplicates of them here. I really love the easy access to those characters on the right lower layer, as this makes my life much easier when coding. All in all, I consider this exact lower layer to be the real game changer when it comes to efficiency and ergonomics. The raise layer contains some less used functionality, like the media keys on the left side and all the F keys on the right side. I put the F keys on the right side so that I can hit them with one hand, e.g. F5 for compile and run, etc. The left side also has some key combinations for switching windows in the i3 window manager I use on Linux. German umlauts are on the right pinky, as well as the Colmac S key, as we have a special character that is some weird kind of an S. Finally, the adjust layer is accessed via pressing both the layer keys at the same time. Opposed to lower and raise, the adjust layer does not require holding down these keys, but is activated permanently until deactivated by pressing the raise key. This feature allows me to temporarily switch to the lower layer by holding the lower key if navigation or special characters are needed. The adjust layer itself mainly holds the numbers as well as their respective special characters. This is required for the Piantor, which has no number row. On the iris, I never use this layer. And this leads us directly to a question that is as old as time, maybe even slightly older. What is the perfect number of keys on your board? Do you need a number row? And can you get rid of the outer columns to avoid even the tiniest stretches? I personally prefer having all of those keys, and 56, as on the iris, is the lowest I really feel comfortable with. The effort of having to switch layers more often is not worth the benefit of having a more compact board. If you travel a lot though, you might have a different opinion. I know that layers are only one option to fit more functionality on a small board. 
UMK offers two features called Tap Dance and Tap and Hold. The idea here is that with Tap Dance, rapidly pressing a key twice will output a different character than pressing it once, while for Tap and Hold, holding the key for a certain amount of time will change its output. I did try both of these features and I disliked them for the very same reason. When you use these on a key that normally has a character on it, e.g. any key on the home row, the default character will only be sent once you release the key, instead of being sent on key press. Of course, this is required because the board will only know on release whether you press the key twice, held it down beyond the threshold time, or just pressed it regularly. This might seem like a minor inconvenience, but to me it really felt weird and all the other keys would react on press rather than release. It just broke my flow when typing. On top of that, adjusting these timings to where it felt reliable was a rather tedious job and I can't say that I'm fully convinced by the feature. Other than that, I'm sure you could get used to that and adjust the timings to your liking. After all, it could be a big deal having some modifier keys on the home row when holding down those keys. Just not my cup of green tea. In conclusion, going smaller than 56 key feels like sacrificing speed and ease of use for ergonomics, which was not worth it for me as I am super comfortable on my iris. And now I'm talking to you, all you people screaming at the screen that this is exactly what Vim does and nobody needs a custom layout. Well, hear me out. I love Vim and I use it on a daily basis and Vim motions are one of the best things to learn if you want to increase your productivity when coding. However, you cannot use Vim key bindings in every tool, uh, at least not without installing and configuring a lot of plugins. Opposed to this, a custom keyboard layout is saved on the chip of the board itself, making it available not only in every tool you use, but also on every computer. No need to install anything. Additionally, the basic movement keys of Vim, which are H, J, K and L, are optimized for a QWERTY layout and are rather awkward on Colmec. Yes, these could be configured, but why bother if you can have a custom keyboard layout? It is also a tad faster to use the movement cluster, because I don't need to switch between normal and insert mode a lot of the time. I hope you can see the point I am trying to make about custom keyboard layouts. For the price of having to relearn some of the keys, which is typically done in around two weeks, you can gain more efficiency and comfort for the rest of your whole career. I urge you to at least give it a shot. The availability of custom keyboard has really skyrocketed throughout the past few years and some boards can be had for as low as 100 bucks. Beware of the rabbit hole though, as building mechanical keyboards can become quite addictive. My layouts for both the Iris and the Piantor can be found on my GitHub repository linked in the video description down. In case you have any problems setting things up or find ideas on how to improve, just leave me a comment below. If you're like me and favor custom keyboards layout, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more content on keyboards and coding.